Welcome. I'll spend a few minutes and talk about the converter primitive within Insight Maker. There are often times when the input or the the variable that you want to use at a certain place within a model is isn't a constant constant or isn't a well defined function that you can represent by some mathematical formula. The best that you can do is to represent it by a set of values. So the, the converter is a primitive that allows you to, in fact, specify a set of values for a, a variable. It's just, it functions like a variable, except you explicitly state the values of it. And once you create it, you either can select over here, excuse me, to have it open the definition window or you can select the equal sign on the side of it and what it allows you to do is specify the set of points that define this particular sequence of values. Now you can define this in such a way that that there is a linear the value that it uses for points between the points you define are determined based on a linear interpolation of the values between those points or you can in fact define this function to to be um, that that it is there is no interpolation so that if you then open it and look at it it's simply a step function so that for any point between this point and this point it uses the same constant value um, most of the time I, I have found that I end up using the linear interpolation mode for the converter. And when you define it, the default is that the input is, is the simulation time, though you can in fact define a converter based upon the values of some other variable so that the output values are dependent upon some other input variable and and you define that in terms of of the input source here it's time and you could define it to be some other value that is connected to it with a link now in this particular instance these are just uh, two sets of data that were developed for some situation that we were looking at. So because the values are defined when you run the simulation, it simply shows you the value of of those two converters over the 24 months of this time period. Now, this this particular situation was done to to show that if you look at two pieces of data that trend over time, it's often difficult to relate the changes in one to the changes in the other because they're, they, the extent to which they vary differs greatly. So that if, if you in fact take that data and normalize it so that this is sales divided by the maximum level of sales and this is the resources divided by, subtract 25 divided by 65, which normalizes it to a value between 0 and 1. When you look at the normalized values, both of the sets of data trend between 0 and 1, and it's much easier to see the relative changes in one relative to the other. And I, I just point that out because some, sometimes it turns out to be really valuable to get a, a different sense of, of how the changes in one relate to the other in terms of the extent to which they're changing. Now, as I said, you can in fact use a converter such that the input to the converter is defined on some other variable. In this particular model, it's a population growth model where the population is a reinforcing structure so that the births are dependent upon the population, which is dependent upon the births, and it's a it's an exponential growth, though at the same time, there's a birth rate which is dependent upon the population, which also figures into the value of births. And if you look at the birth rate, it, it begins at a value of about 0.095. And as the population increases, the birth rate decreases. So what this ends up doing, if we look at the 
the way that this is defined is the birth rate times the population. When we run this model, you notice that the, the population demonstrates an exponential increase until it gets to a certain point and then it, it levels out and declines simply because of the way that the the birth rate function is dependent upon the population. So here is an example where the input is population as opposed to a time valued input to a converter. And here is a similar model for food consumption where there are in fact uh, several converters so that the, this um, this is a time input on this one so the food per capita what is this? Oh, what? Food per capita. Input is time. What is the time? Well, that's interesting. I guess I'm going to have to go take a look at this one and figure out why the input for this is time, because it is in fact this variable, which is in units of kilograms per minute. So. Um, because I don't know why the the uh, it doesn't make any sense. This is the, this is a, a evolution of the previous model, and this this death rate is dependent upon eat per head, and the death rate declines over time. So that you have you have a couple of these components, and I still don't know the reason for this one, but I'll figure it out. So the the point is. The converter is used when you don't have a a constant or a nice well-defined formula to use to define a variable and you can use a set of values to define the output values for some comparative input value. So hope this has been helpful and I'll figure out what the problem of this model is and go fix it. So bye.